What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Grim Entertainment. I'm back at it again today with Deck Rec number five. Um, this one is really fun to play. Uh, it's really not fun to play against. Today, I'm going to show you guys my version of Jaleva Nefalia's Scourge. Uh, this was a pre con back in 2013, 2014. I think it was like 40 bucks right out of the box. It was pretty competitive, pretty broken mechanic on her. Um, and you could even sell the true name Nemesis back in the day right out of the box for about the same price that you would pay for the whole deck. Um, uh, regardless, she cost one colorless, uh, an island, a swamp, and a mountain, so Grixis, for a 1-3 flying vampire wizard that has, whenever she enters the battlefield, each player, including yourself, exiles the top X cards of his or her library where X is the amount of mana spent to cast Jaleva. So the first time it's going to be four, then commander tax is going to make it six. Uh, all that good stuff. And then uh, her second ability is whenever she attacks, you may cast an instant or sorcery card exiled with her without paying its mana cost. So as you can imagine, the, the, the idea behind this is to exile my own spells that are just huge casting costs that you would never play in any other game um, and then play them for free when she attacks. Got to give her haste. Uh, sub theme here is that I like to copy stuff, whether it be mine or yours or play your stuff against you. And then recently, I'm trying to turn it into also exiling a bunch of cards. Um, like I said, really fun to play this deck. Super not fun to play against it. Uh, these turns take a long time because you just get into some crazy shenanigans that you're not going to see every time. And I mean, I'm still running into stuff that I've never had happen. Uh, but let's get into it. So... Uh, we're going to start off like we usually do with lands, and then I got them in order, as always. Uh, you know, the best I could, ramp, removal, and utility. Um, and yeah, so you start off, we got uh, four swamps. You got four islands. Four mountains. And then we get into some of the utility lands here. Um, so we got the temples, you know. Uh, oop, smack the camera. Got the temples. Uh, scrying. You know, if you can top deck this this uh, general before you cast her to, to ensure that you have some good instants and sorceries to play when she attacks, that's always what you want to do. Um, and so there's gonna, you're going to notice there's a lot of stuff in here that comes in tap. Temple of Deceit. Uh, because we also run Amulet of Vigor in here at some point. You'll see that. And uh, so we're not, we're not too worried about things that come in tapped. Crumbling Necropolis. One of every color. Bajuka Bog. Uh, good good little land just to get rid of somebody's graveyard if they're playing too much recursion. Hall of the Bandit Lord. Again, I think I've showed you guys this, guys this before in my other decks. If you're running a general that needs haste, or if you're running creatures that need haste, this card is super useful. You just pay three life, and then when you use the mana that it creates to play a creature spell, that creature comes in with haste. It's perfect. Uh, then we got Vivid Creek, tapped two counters, any color uh, with those two counters. Otherwise, it's just blue for you. We got Magozi the Water Veil. This one comes in tapped, but you can untap it if you got Amulet. You add one to your mana pool, or you can pay one, tap it to put an Aeon counter on it, and then skip your next turn. Ideally, you want to do that on like your first turn. Uh, and then later in the game, you can tap it, remove one of the Aeon counters from uh, Magozi, and then take an extra turn. And you put this back in your hand. It's it's it, it works. Um, we got is it boiler works? You know, comes in tapped. Got to do the whole bounce of land back to your hand, but it taps for two. Dragons. Oop, sorry. Nope, nope, nope. Drowned catacomb is the next one in the line here. Uh, you know, it's just coming in, checking to see if you have an island or a swamp, and then uh, if you don't, then it comes in tapped. But if you do, then it just black or blue. We got Dragon Skull Summit, same thing, check land, but we're looking this time for a Swamp or a Mountain, and it adds a Swamp or a Mountain. We got Sunken Hollow, this one enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basic lands in general. We got the old Battle Bond Luxury Suite here, uh, as long as you got two or more opponents, comes in untapped. We got Reflecting Pool, um, anything that your other lands could produce, you can just add another type. Uh, command Tower, anything in your commander's color identity. Sanctum of Eternity, uh, add a colorless or pay two to return target commander you own from the battlefield to your hand. This is really helpful for, you know, if you're, if you're 
opponents figure out that you you kind of like it when your general gets killed, especially if there's nothing out on the battlefield for her to exploit. Uh, and you can put her, put her back in your hand, pay four from your hand again, and then exile the next four from everybody so you have more spells to choose from. And then we got our fetchies. Got the old polluted delta. You guys know what fetch lands do. Got a gold bordered blood stain mire because at one point this was expensive. Uh, I got the old scalding tarn. A little bit of glare on the camera there. Sorry, guys. Uh, I got the watery grave so you can fetch with the fetch land. Got to pay that two life for those shocks to come in, though. You know, steam vents always worth it. I just pay the two life. Sometimes you don't need it though. Blood crypt. And we're going to get into the creatures now. So, uh, Thieves Guild Enforcer. Uh, making people mill. And then as long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, she's actually going to get plus two, plus one, and death touch. So, that's always cool. And she has flash, so you can, you know, milling cards. Uh, Baleful Strix. It's a two drop, black and blue. One, one flying with death touch, and when it comes into the battlefield, draw a card. Easy. Thassa's Oracle. Uh, this does a little comboing later on with a card that we, we're we going to see called uh, Demonic Consultation. But it's uh, two blue. One three for Moorfolk Wizard. When it enters the battlefield, you look at the top X cards of your library where X is your devotion to blue. So you're already going to have two. Uh, you're going to put one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom in a random order. But if X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. Shenanigans to be had there. Uh, Gilded Drake, this is a proxy. Yeah, I know. This thing's like 500 bucks now. It's absolutely insane. It was only 60 when I bought it. Uh, but yeah, Gilded Drake. There's just no other card like it. You pay two, comes in, it's a 3-3 flyer, but you get to exchange control of a uh, target creature one of your opponent's controls. I'm almost always going after a general, unless you played something ridiculous like a Silver and Primordial or freaking Rune Scar Demon or something crazy. Um, yeah, it's a really fun card. Can't believe I was lucky enough to snag one of those when it was cheap. Uh, Cryptoplasm. It's a three drop. Two two at the beginning of your upkeep. You can choose this uh, card to become an, a copy of another creature. And if you do, it gains that ability so you can do it every turn. That's always cool. Having the ability to swap. Like, oh man, I wish I wouldn't have copied that Snapcaster. It only worked for me one time. But... Oh, I mean, Snapcaster's a bad example. But, you know, you, you copy something that doesn't really work for you, and then the next turn you can copy something that, that works way better. Uh, Marilyn of the Morn Song. Uh, she makes it so players can't draw cards. She's a three drop, two, three elf wizard. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player loses three life and searches his or her library for a card, puts it into her hand, and then shuffles her library. So basically makes it so you can't draw, but at the beginning of each turn, um, each player is going to get to Demonic Tutor. We got some shenanigans that go along with this later, too, to make so only you can search and all of your opponents can't search. Uh, and then once you play that, it's basically like getting locked out. It sucks. Nobody wants to finish that game. Uh, Phyrexia Metamorph, same thing. You pay three and one blue or two life for a copy of any artifact or creature on the battlefield. And that little thing that says any, that lets you get around target because you're not targeting. It, it just says any. Um, yeah, so... And we got Kest Dissident Mage. That's another four drop. Three, four flyer. Uh, during each of your turns, you may cast an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. If it would be ca uh, when you cast it, if it go back to your graveyard, exile it instead. So you can give basically cards in your graveyard, instants and sorceries flashback. Then we got a trade of the silencer. Uh, four drop for a three five vampire assassin. She can't be blocked, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile target creature that player controls and put a hit counter on that card. That player loses the game if they own three or more exiled cards with hit counters on them. Uh, and then a trader's owner shuffles a trader a trader into their library. And put a hit to that player. Wait a minute. Hmm. See, now I'm reading this, and I'm I'm thinking like. So every time she deals combat damage, she has to go back in the library? Is that how that works? Or is that only if the player loses the game? I've never pulled this off, so I've, I've never really looked at it too much like that. I just read it, and I'm thinking, hmm, that might not work that way. I have to figure that out. Let me know in the comments if you know exactly how that works. Might take that card out. Uh, four drop, evil twin. 
Coming to the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Again, getting around that target thing. Except for you can pay two, tap it, and destroy target creature with the same name. So, Evil Twin. It's good stuff. Dax Duplicate. Coming out of uh, one of the conspiracy sets. Enter the battlefield as any creature again. But it gains haste and dethrone. So this is cool. So, you know, you can put a 1-1 one, one counter on it if you're attacking somebody that's starting with their 40 life total. Uh, and it has haste, too. So Then we got good old Wonder. Let me stack these down here for a second. Okay. Ooh, smack the camera again. Uh, Wonder, you know... It's uh, just a four drop for a two-two flyer, but as long as it's in your graveyard and I have and you have an island, all your creatures have flying. That's always fun. And we got anger, four drop with haste. As long as it's in your graveyard and you control a mountain, creatures have haste. That's important for Jaleva to be able to swing on the turn that you play her, so that you can have access to those instant sorceries. Uh, this is a fun one, Galvanoth. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may look at the top card of your library. If it's an instant or sorcery card, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. <laughs> Crazy. We're going to have some psychotic instants and sorceries. So if we can play one of those for free without even having to use our, our uh, general as a backup plan, that's always good. Especially since some of the stuff that we have in this deck is going to let us manipulate the top deck. Uh, I'm going to punch the camera a little bit more, and then we're going to move on to the next card. Scorch of the Throne. Six drop for a 5-5 five, five dragon. It's also got dethrone again. But whenever it attacks for the first time each turn, if it's attacking the player with the most life... Untap all your creatures, and there's going to be an additional combat phase. If you got that general out there, and you can cast two cards per turn with her, or per attack phase, that's always good. Well, I mean, you're going to get two attack phases, but you'll get to cast two. You know what I'm saying. You could do four if you have Strionic Resonator, and then things get out of hand. Uh, six drop, Atali Primal Storm. Six, six, Elder Dinosaur. When he attacks, exile the top card of each player's library, and then you can cast any number of non-land cards without paying their mana cost. Again... Don't need the general always. This will let us cast some crazy stuff too. I've casted uh, demonic tutors and vampiric tutors and stuff. It's always good. Rex Seal the Risen Deep, six drop. Island Walk, Swamp Walk, good start. Five eight. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may cast instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. You guys sensing a theme here? Uh, and then if that card we put in a graveyard, exile it instead. Yeah, we're doing a lot of casting stuff for free with this deck. It's it's a free casting deck, and it's just mean. Speaking of mean, Olamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Uh, when you cast it, exile two permanents. Ouch. 10-10 indestructible. Double ouch. And then whenever it attacks, defending player exiles, not mills, exiles the top 20 cards of their library. And if you got Strionic Resonator out there, you're exiling a 40, baby, and that's what we're looking to do. Uh, I have only got to do it one time, but to watch somebody exile 40 cards off the top of their library is heartbreaking for them, and it's just like, give me every tier. <laughs> um, yeah, we're ruthless in my group. Uh, Vandal Blast. Destroy target artifact you don't control, and if you can pay the five, you destroy all artifacts you don't control. That's just mean. This deck's mean. Uh, Brainstorm. Draw on three cards, putting two from your hand on top of your library. Help you set that top deck up again. Ponder, same thing. Put them back in any order. Top three. Shuffle your library if you want. Draw a card. Vampiric Tutor. Um, you can search for a bunch of win cons. Or you can do what we like to call poor man's time walk. Uh, where you maybe you might be looking for the uh, miracle cost temporal mastery. Is it mastery? We'll find out here in a minute. But put that on top. Then you can basically take an extra turn for two. Uh, Vampiric Tutor is a great card. One drop. Demonic Consultation. This is the one that combos with Thassa's Oracle, like I was saying earlier. Uh, so you're going to pay one black. Name a card. Uh, if you're going to use it in combo form, you're going to name a card that's not in your deck. So we don't even have green or uh, white in this deck. So I'd pick a green or a white card. Name it. You're not going to find it in your library. And then you're basically going to already... Uh, have Thassa's Oracle in your hand, so you're going to name a card not in your library, exile your whole library, play Thassa's Oracle. When it checks for those two cards, your devotion is going to be two, and you're going to win the game. Um, so, yeah. Or you can you can literally use this to exile cards off, uh, off the top of your library until you can find that piece that you need. You can also search for something that you need uh, that you know hasn't been taken from you or isn't in your hand or graveyard. It's a great card. 
And we got Lim Duels Vault coming in with uh, blue and a black. Look at the top card. Look at the top five cards of your library. As many times as you choose, you may pay one life and put those cards on the bottom and look at the top five cards of your library again. Shuffle all but the top five cards of your library and then put the five that you chose on top in any order. So you can basically just stack whatever you want to on the top five for one life each time uh, and then and then cast Jaleva and know exactly what you're going to get. Uh, reverberate, just letting me copy an instant or sorcery spell. I, I love doing this on like cultivates or Kodama's Reach or anything where people are ramping because we got green or we got no green and no white, so we're not really ramping too much with the green, and um, you know we don't have land tax or anything either. So uh, also, if somebody wants to take an extra turn, I'll take an extra turn. Rakdos Charm. Coming in with Rakdos Cost. Uh, choose one. Exile all cards from target player's graveyard. We love doing that. Destroy target artifact. That's always good. Uh, but here's the one that I like to do since this is an instant. Uh, you let somebody make a, a million Palancrons or a million 1-1 one, one Thopters or wh whatever. And then you play this card at instant speed and each creature deals one damage to its controller and they kill themselves. That's let Let all feel joy and pain. Exactly. Exactly. Nothing like that. Uh, the old Cyclonic Rift. You guys probably never heard of this card. It's not very good. Um, nobody plays it. Return target, non-land permanent. You don't control to its owner's hand. I mean, I guess. Overload 6. You can you can return all non-land permanents you don't control to their owner's hands. I don't know why you'd ever do that. It just, you know... They can just play it again. I don't know. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's really good. I'm just kidding. Uh... Demonic Tutor, paying two, picking any card out of your deck, put it in your hand. Always good. We got Howl of the Horde. Three drop. When you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, not this phase, copy that spell. Choose new targets for that copy. Uh, and then if you attacked with a creature this turn, you copy it twice. So uh, you, can, you can either just get one copy when you attack with Jaleva, or you can play this after you've attacked with Jaleva, but before you play something else catastrophic and you can copy that spell two times. Gets out of hand. I played like three extra taking extra turn cards the other day on on the table and that was that was fun. Uh Praetor's Grasp. Search target opponent's library for a card and exile it face down. Then they shuffle their library and I can look at that card and play it for as long as it remains exiled. Um you know it doesn't say you can use mana as any any cost or any color to pay the cost so you kind of got to pick something you can you can play out of the deck uh but it's only a three drop it's fun good card from i think what new phyrexia ah sudden spoiling this is a game changer uh three drop split second so you can literally just shut off stacks um it, which is fun and then uh creatures target player controls become zero two and lose all abilities so in the middle of them trying to do some combo stuff with a creature you can just be like yeah nah i don't like that i don't like that Mind Funeral, 3-drop, target opponent reveals cards from the top of his or her library until they reveal 4 land cards. You can get anywhere from 4 cards to 50 cards, depending on how many lands and where the pockets are. It's insane. Um, and then, like I was saying, we're doing a lot of milling in this, and what I'm trying to do is make it so that if you would mill something, it goes to your exile instead. Um, and so that's, we're kind of making that as a little theme. Um, but like, like I said, I just, I like to show you guys these decks the way they are. I've put a lot of uh, time into this one. This one was my baby for a while and then it started turning into ridiculously long turns and people started getting mad at me and then uh, I didn't want to play it anymore. But you know, people start getting mad at you. Ugh. Here's what it is. From the ashes. That's salt, man. It dries you out. <laughs> Four drop. Destroy all non-basic lands. For each land destroyed this way, its controller may search his or her library for a basic land put onto the battlefield and then shuffle their library. This is a great card to play if you're playing opponents who have no basic lands. Um, I make sure that I run some in here so that I can always at least get back, you know, four, maybe five, six lands to cast my general again. But sometimes people have eight non-basics, and they don't have basics, so you just kill all their land, and you get to keep yours. It's fun. Mystic's Mastery, four drop, exile card, uh, instant sorcery from your graveyard. 
for each card exiled that way. Copy it and cast it without paying its mana cost. If you can overload this for eight, you can play your whole graveyard without uh, without paying its mana cost for instance and sorceries. Somebody milled me like half my deck a game or two ago when I was playing with this and I played this card and got to play everything. It was awesome. Uh, Void. This one was new to me recently. Um, five drop. Choose a number. Destroy all artifacts and creatures with converted mana cost equal to that number. Then you get to pick a player. They're going to reveal their hand and discard all non-land cards with the same converted mana cost. It's crazy. If everybody has a soul ring but you, you just pick one. And then everybody's soul rings are gone. It's it, it, it's a lot more powerful than it seems. Uh, hatred. Since we're doing da uh, general damage, just pay five and pay 20 life and just get somebody out of the game real quick. Awesome card from Exodus. Uh, time Warp. Pay five, take an extra turn. We definitely abuse that card. Um, upheaval. Yes, this is banned, obviously. Uh, return all permanents to their owner's hands. All. Not all non-land like Cyclonic, but just for six, all. Lands and everything. It's like, who wants to play through that, man? That's just mean. Uh, Spell Twine. Six drop. Exile an instant or sorcery card in my graveyard and in an opponent's graveyard. Copy them and cast them without paying their mana costs. Mm. Free spell action. It is Temporal Mastery. So if you take that Vampiric Tutor, put this on top of your library, you're gonna gear and nobody can mess with you. You're going to guarantee that you get to... Uh, ooh, we got some... These, this deck has been played and uh, played. <laughs> Sleeves are getting dirty. Uh, but, yeah, you put the this card on top of your library, you're guaranteeing that miracle cost if nobody uh, makes you mill or anything, and then for two, you're going to take an extra turn. Poor man's time walk. Buddy Jake coined that, and that's what we do with it all the time. He, he did it, and we've been doing it ever since. Uh, Cabal Conditioning, 7-drop. Any number of target players each discards cards from their hand equal to the highest converted mana cost among permanents you control. I did this the last night we played cards last Saturday. And uh, I did this right before I played Maryland and Stranglehold. So no one had a hand and then they couldn't draw. They were supposed to get to search their libraries for a card every turn. But I had Stranglehold so only I got to do that. And it's like, do you guys even want to play at that point? <laughs> <laughs> uh, cruel ultimatum uh, two blue three black and two red target opponent sacrifices a creature discards three cards and loses five life then you return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand draw three cards and gain five life awesome card this one came in the pre-con actually it's a great card we got good old blatant thievery it's a seven drop and for each opponent gain control of target permanent that player controls so Give me your best card on the field. <laughs> I love that. It's like a... It kind of looks like Vega the Watcher from Caldheim. Caldheim comes out today. Are you guys stoked about that? Holy hell. Uh, just just an owl swiping some jewelry off that dude. Knowledge Exploitation. This one's good too. Uh, tribal Sorcery Rogue. Uh, search target opponent's library for an instant or sorcery card. Play it without paying its mana cost. And then shuffle their library. Uh, nobody wants to, to get their time stretch taken out of their deck and have you play it for free. That's just rude. Worst fears, eight drop. You control target player during that player's next turn. Exile worst fears. You see all the cards they have and make all the decisions. A lot of times, you know, you can't make somebody concede, but what you can do is mill themselves out or, you know, a lot of times we're playing people who have combos that, that only work once. And so you just waste half the combo or tap all their land and attack somebody with their creatures that are going to die. It's awesome. Beacon of Tomorrows. Uh, you can get into an infinite loop with this one. Uh, as long as you have the mana to cast it and it's the only card in your in your deck, you can just continually take extra turns because you're going to shuffle it back into your library every time. And so it's just like, I'll just take infinite turns and win the game. Rude. <laughs> Uh, Worldfire, another banned card. Nine drop, exile all permanents, exile all cards from all hands and graveyards. Each player's life total becomes one. So I'm going to just make the game hard for everybody to win. We're all going to have one. And then whoever can start swinging first wins. Man, is that, that rude to play. 
Skullstorm, another great one. Uh, nine drop. When you cast a spell, copy it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone. Usually at least two times. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. Usually two times. And if they can't, they lose half their life. Round it up. Ouch. Imagine if you've played your general four times on that. Uh, Ingeruk's Wake. I actually copied that spell three times the other day, so you had to lose half your life four times. It was insane. Nine drop, destroy all creatures and planeswalkers you don't control. That's board changing. Rise of the Dark Realms. And you guys are seeing these nine drops. What? Don't forget, we're not paying for these. Almost every time we're going to be casting these for free, and they're game-altering spells. Nine drop, put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. Ugh. Expropriate, another nine drop. Uh, starting with you, each player votes for time or money, and for each time vote, take an extra turn. For each money vote, choose a permanent owned by the voter and gain control of it. I'm always going to vote time for myself. Usually people would rather give me an extra turn than give me one of their permanents, and then all of a sudden you're taking four extra turns, and that turns into four more extra turns, and then people just concede. Your turns become very long, uh, which is why we got some of those two-card combos in here, because... Nobody wants to watch you take extra turns and actually play them out and not win the game. Uh, time stretch, 10 drop, take two extra turns. <laughs> turn, 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 turn. Get into the artifacts now. Soul Ring, staple, gotta have it. Mana Vault, one drop for three mana. Let me get that. Amulet of Vigor, uh, good one to search for. Good one to have in your opening hand if you can if you can get lucky enough to get that. Uh, makes anything that comes in tapped untapped. And it literally says it that way. Whenever a permanent enters the battlefield tapped under your control, untap it. So if you got, if somebody's got a Eurobrask or they're trying to lock you out prison style with the, uh, was it blind obedience? Or if they have, uh, you know, Kinjali's Sunwing, this gets around that. Yeah, it's going to come in tapped and then I'll untap it. It's a great card. Uh, those snow duel lands, I bet your Amulet of Vigor is probably going to go up in price if people want to run those snow duels like that. Swiftfoot Boots, Hexproof and Haste for one equip cost. Oop. We got Strionic Resonator, two drop, pay in two to copy target triggered ability. So uh, when, whenever, or at, we got a lot of those in this deck, and all you got to do is pay two and tap it to copy that ability. Um, so whenever she attacks, you can just pay two and tap it, and you'll get to cast two of those exiled spells with Jaleva. Uh, enchantments now. we got Psychic Surgery. This one's fun. Whenever an opponent shuffles his or her library, you look at the top two cards, exile one of those cards, and put the rest on top. I love doing this. Everybody's tutoring in Commander, right? Especially if somebody makes the mistake of doing a vampiric tutor or something while this is on the field. They forget you have it, and you're like, oh, what'd you just top deck? Let's exile it. <laughs> Hammer of Perforos, uh, another three drop that just gives everything you have haste. You can sacrifice land, put a three three colorless golem onto the battlefield, but I mean, who's doing that? This is all about just giving your creatures haste. And then we got the infamous that I was talking about, Stranglehold. Opponents can't search libraries, and if an opponent would begin an extra turn, they skip that turn instead. Um, like I was saying, you play this in Maryland, no one can search their library. But Maryland makes it so no one can draw, and you have to search your library, but they can't. So basically, you're demonic tutoring for the rest of the game. And then uh, if they can't stop you with what was currently in their hand, they're not going to be able to stop you. It's a really fun combo. It only costs seven mana to do it. Thousand Year Storm, six drop enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it for each other instant or sorcery cast before it this turn. This gets out of control quickly. Dak Faden, getting into the Planeswalkers. He's a three drop, uh, comes in with three counters, plus one, draw two cards, discard two cards. His minus two is what we're almost always going to go for that right off the, out of the gate, gain control of target artifact, any. You get a Blight Steel Colossus, it's mine now. And then if you're lucky enough to get up to six, you get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell that targets one or more permanents, you gain control of those permanents. I haven't got to kick that one off yet, nobody likes Dak Faden. Little red hand stealing artifacts. Nobody likes him. I think that's why he had to die in War of the Spark, isn't it? 
Uh, three drop, Ashiok Nightmare Weaver. Uh, comes in with three counters. Exile the top three cards, the target opponent's library. Good start. And then the second one, minus X, to put a creature card with converted mana cost X, exiled by Ashiok onto the battlefield under your control, and makes that creature a nightmare in addition to its other types. I love using that one. There's nothing like getting some of these good cards, especially if my opponent has a Gilded Drake. I can just write off, you know, exile top three. Ooh, is that a Gilded Drake? I'll take that next turn, unless you kill Ashiok. Uh, and then if, you can, if you're lucky enough to get to the 10, exile all cards from all opponents' hands and graveyards. That's a stretch, though. That's more... If you're getting to 10, you're probably playing that in, like, a track set or something. And then we got uh, Nickel Bolas Dragon God, 5-drop. He has all the loyalty abilities of all other Planeswalkers on the battlefield. That's broken. Plus one, drawn a card, and then each opponent exiles a card from their hand or a permanent they control. Ouch. Minus three, destroying target creature or Planeswalker, and then minus eight, each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or Planeswalker loses the game. You can get this up to eight and then board wipe. Basically over. <laughs> Uh, Nicol Bolas, God Pharaoh, is our last card. He's a 7-drop Grixis. Uh, target opponent exiles the cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. And then until end of turn, I'm going to cast that card without paying its mana cost. So you drop this on the battlefield, you're basically playing something out of somebody's library for free every time. Uh, and then, Or you could plus one to have each opponent exile two cards from their hand. That's always a good option. Minus four to have him deal seven damage to target opponent or creature. And then his ultimate is exile each non-land permanent your opponent's control. Rude. Uh, this deck's fun. It's not one that I like to play consistently because it doesn't matter if I'm playing one person or five people with that exile ability. The more opponents I have, the more versatility I have to play spells. And once this deck starts rolling with extra turns and taking stuff and copying stuff and playing it for free, it gets out of hand quick. Um, yeah, that's my take on Jaleva Nefalia's Scourge. Um, yeah, so, and then, I, you know, I forgot at the beginning of this video, but for all you guys who wanted the deck list, uh, I'll throw it up right here, right now. Hopefully you guys copied that. Uh, I'll probably put it up in the beginning too. But uh, yeah, like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe even share this if you guys think this is a fun deck. You guys got any, uh, any, any tips or tricks you think this deck needs that I'm missing out on? Let me know. Uh, do you guys run Jaleva? Is this a general you would run? Uh, do you have anything like this? Do you have the baby Jaleva, the, the other Narset? Um, let me know in the comments, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and then also let me know if you guys if you guys like that gameplay when I was showing you guys a, a a test game. I think I only did it for the Skithrix deck for the first deck record. But if you guys like that, let me know in the comments. I'll I'll uh, I'll take this and we'll we'll play some one on one or some some three way games, and you guys can see what it does uh, at the table. It's a force to be reckoned with, and it's not even fully tuned yet. So uh, that's that. Appreciate you guys watching. Have a good one.